Hello everyone and welcome to Dallas Hoops Fancast. I'm your host Sydney and I'm here with my co-host Martin. So you can follow the show on Twitter at Dallas Hoops Cast. The site is DallasHoopsCast.com. I'm on Twitter at underscore Sydney Myers. Hey, so you know how last time I said that DallasHoopsCast.com was named a top 10 Mavericks blog by Feedspot.com? Mm-hmm. So it turns out also Dallas Hoops Fancast was named a top 10 podca- Mavs podcast by Feedspot.com. Also, still don't know if Feedspot, if what Doesn't this matter. means. The I don't know what it means. The fact is we're in the top 10. The fact is we're any, there. And yes. I do know that there, there's got to be more than 10 Mavs podcasts. Because I feel like there's a lot. Every time I look, there's 500. For I just a did a search one, right now. Yeah, there's yeah. a ton of them. So um, that's pretty cool. Thank you to all the listeners who you know you guys are part of this. Obviously, so far, we we're wouldn't be doing this. Close if, to a million listens. Now. Yeah, I mean, oh, yes. In my 999,000. <laughs> You're close. <laughs> You're really close. Okay. Um, so there's a lot to talk about because we haven't done an episode in forever, and it just so happens that. A big thing happened, what, yesterday? Yeah, because today is Tuesday. Um, Doc Rivers was fired by the Clippers. And now I know, like, this isn't Mavericks related. So I figured, you know, just to have sort of an excuse to talk about it, I'll put a Mavericks spin on it. it. (laughs) I don't think it's necessary, um, but okay. Um, So we'll we'll start it with this, and and then we can just talk about it. Okay. Um, Doc Rivers, would you take him over Rick Carlisle? No. Why were we even... Okay, let's just talk about it. That was unnecessary. That was my segue into making it relevant. Very shocking, though, because obviously Doc Rivers has the reputation that he has. He's won a championship in 2008 with... Like 20 years ago with... Well, but he still won Three Hall of Famers. I mean, Rick Carlisle won in 2011. That's almost a decade ago. So it goes by really fast. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. (laughs) All I'm saying is... (laughs) He has a reputation for being one of the top coaches in the league. Mm -hmm. And you would think if anybody could manage the personalities on that Clipper team, it would have been him. Yeah. But unfortunately, I guess it's Bomber or Steve Bomber. Bomber. Yeah, Yeah, decided he uh, wanted to move on. Yeah, there was this um, article on ESPN that I'm uh, pretty sure is by Ramona Shelburne. And I mean, I assume she's got some sort of insight into this. Um, but you know, again, it's, this is reporting, but she talked about like what led to the firing. Um, and basically just Balmer didn't want to, didn't want to give him another chance. Um, it said that they had talked about things they could do differently schematically or how they could get the players motivated next season, things they could do to build chemistry. And ultimately, you know, Rivers was looking at it in that way. And Balmer was looking at it as well, why don't we already have that? Like, why don't they play hard? Why weren't they motivated? You know, and I mean, chemistry, right, comes and goes, but schematically, I know there were criticisms of, even against the Mavericks, adjustments that they could have made. Earlier in the series. Yeah, with Montrez Harrell being on the court whenever um, Boban was and just getting torched. And and really the big man matchup, um, a lot of people were critical of the lack of adjustments um, I don't know. Personally, I feel like, so, okay, you know, Harold, he can't play against a big man. Well, it's like, we well, got Boban or Kristaps. What are you supposed to do? Just not ever play him? To well, me, I kind of felt like maybe he didn't have another option. Well, I think this is, this is where you talk about the, the balance between using advanced analytics and your gut. Mm-hmm. Because I, I asked a guy, he's a Clippers kind of beat writer or whatever, um, when I was back on the Twitters, <laughs> and I asked him, you know, is is Doc Rivers a analytics guy? Is he a gut guy? And he mm-hmm. said he's one hundred percent a gut guy. He doesn't even Old school. yeah, he doesn't yeah. look at analytics. And I think there's got to be some balance. Obviously, you don't want to be too far one way or the other. But his gut kept telling him that Harold's been great all year. He should be. He's he's eventually going to get. He'll it. turn it around. Yes, yeah. and Zubots is Zubots, and yeah. that's really all there is to it. But the advanced numbers indicated that when Zubots was on the floor, you were destroying the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. When Harold was on the court, you were getting destroyed. So and and that certain matchups. Yes, just, and, and he yeah. but he didn't recognize those. He, he I don't know what his thought process was. Yeah. Um. 
I don't know much about Doc Rivers other than the fact that he's won a championship and he has a reputation, but he's never been our yeah. coach, so we never analyzed him the way we did, like, Carlisle. And, uh, but the people that were close to the organization felt that he was overrated as a coach. They were, pre- the fans were pretty critical, mm-hmm. even like not just, you know, now, but during the, the Mavericks series, I remember reading stuff on Reddit and they weren't as high on him as I mm-hmm. expected. And I mean, I guess maybe it's easy to say that because they weren't playing very well, but. But even before the playoffs started, they felt mm-hmm. that way. They felt that way even before the season. Hmm. Um, based on some of the the feedback I, I'd got, and I think it goes back to the fact that he's lost now three series when he's up three one. It's like, well, at what point is it no longer coincidence? Yeah. And if you are not going to look at advanced stats to help that guide some of your decision making, then mm-hmm. you're not going to make the proper adjustments. Whereas these other coaches are like, hey, if he continues to play hero, we'll just keep doing this and we'll destroy them. Yeah. And in, in Doc Rivers' mind's like, no, that's Montrez Harrell, and, and he's yeah. a, a quality player. I mean, I think there's a balance. Like, I was listening to a pod, and I wish I could remember who it was, but it was a player. And he was saying that, you know, he understood the struggle of being a coach and thinking, like, gosh, can I not play my sixth man of the year, you know, and mm-hmm. how difficult that decision would be. And then also for that player-coach relationship, like, if you – well, not bench him because he already comes off the bench. But if you don't play him, what does that do to that relationship? I mean, it's not as easy as it sounds, but he made the wrong decision. And I think at like maybe to your point, at, at some point, when do you realize I have to make a change? And yeah. I think people just felt like his changes came too late or he didn't Clearly. make the change at all. Yeah. Um, do you think so given the way that the clip well now they've been eliminated and they were eliminated by the Nuggets? Do you think that the Mavericks could have beat them if... If they were fully healthy? Yeah. I mean, I think schematically they were running a better offense. They were... You think Carlisle out him? Carlisle was out coaching him, clearly. Yeah. It, just the level of talent, though, was so far lopsided. Now, if, if Porzingis kept playing and he played at a high level that he had been playing the last 50 games of the year, mm-hmm. then there's... Or just the way he was in the bubble. Yeah. there. I mean, he averaged 30 points a game in the bubble. Yeah. Um there's a high chance that they could have at least taken them to seven, but they may yeah. have even have beaten them because clearly when things got difficult, when they were really having to fight hard, the yeah. Clippers didn't show up. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, that game seven against the Nuggets, it was like all these guys that are always trash talking, you know, um, Montrez and Patrick Beverly and uh, more Marcus Morris. They weren't doing any of that in that game. And it was like, they act all tough, but they're not really like they don't really it's fake tough. Yeah, they can't really yeah. grind it out. They, you know, they were the ball was like a hot potato in that game. Nobody wanted to take a shot, yep. and so, and I think the Nuggets showed that of you know just being resilient and persistent, and you can beat them because they don't really want to battle it out. Yeah, and I think the Mavericks are just like like I tweeted. The Nuggets this year were so much like the 2011 of Mavericks, Mavericks, just having that persistent... Would never quit. Yeah. And so I think if... Yeah, if they were healthy... I mean, how... I I, I just... I can't believe that they wouldn't have beat them. Like, yeah, I mean... You know, the Nuggets, I would say, probably are better than the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I don't know. Not by a lot. Especially with Kristaps healthy. I don't know. I think well, they Well, and they, they create them. a lot of matchup problems for Jokic because... I mean, really, it's it would it would have been a great series, I think. Um, Mavs, it, Mavs, Nuggets. Oh, okay, if, yeah. If I was met. still thinking if the Mavs could beat the Clippers. the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they they had a chance. I, I think the only difference is like coaching schemes and adjustments only go so far. At some point, you have to have some measure of mm-hmm. talent, and I think the talent difference between the Nuggets and the Clippers wasn't as great as it was between the Mavericks and the Clippers. Yeah. And so because their talent was just so much more overwhelming compared to the Mavs, I don't know if they would have been able to beat them. Now, again, with Porzingis, who knows? Who knows yeah. what would have happened because he was playing – he was averaging 30 points a game I mean, for a while there. Like this is a lot of what-ifs mm-hmm. and, and all that, but if Kristaps doesn't get kicked out of game one – if Kristaps is completely healthy the whole series, and if Luca doesn't, if Luca doesn't lose, turn his this, ankle, I mean yes, that's. And, yeah. But I mean, you know, that's the playoffs. Those injuries happen a lot of times. A team wins because those things don't go there yeah. or go their way. So but it's a lot of what ifs. But you know, but when you're the Mavericks and you're evaluating your team and yeah. where you stand, that's kind of what you you go off like. It's what, encouraging. Yeah. 
I'll say that uh, that whole issue of that teams a lot of times have turning it on and turning it off. Mm-hmm. You know, there was this whole mindset that Clippers will turn it on when it matters. Yeah. And if you go back in history and you start hearing the news media and the players start saying that about your team, they never turn it on when it yeah. matters <laughs> because clearly there's another issue there. Mm-hmm. It's not just a matter of turning it on and off. Well, and also like those players They've never turned it on. Right. You're like, what has Beverly done in the playoffs or Marcus Morris or Montrez Harrell or Zubots? I mean, obviously you have guys like Paul George and Kawhi and Lou Williams, but those guys have never turned it on. Well, and I think that was part of the coaching decision. The Mm. problem where they had, even Doc Rivers had this mindset that they can just turn it on when they need to. And they'll run over a team. Maybe like he didn't take it seriously. Well, and so the actual flaws of the team that needed to be worked on, they were Mm -hmm. ignored. They weren't corrected. Yes. Or he didn't make the adjustments. Exactly. And so like one of the issues was they didn't have a fight in them. Mm -hmm. That showed throughout the regular season. And instead of working on that, fixing it, they were like, oh, we'll turn it on when it matters. But really that ended up being their downfall. They just didn't have enough fight. I also think they had some serious chemistry issues yeah yeah okay so um now that the finals are set most of the playoffs are over there's always some fallout from things like this so for example with the clippers with it being just like oh my god nobody predicted this um there could be more shakeups there that maybe people didn't expect anticipate yeah, yeah. anticipate so for example montrez harrell um there's talk about him he's on a his contract ends actually in 2020 no, summer. he's a free agent this yeah, year. Yeah, he's an unrestricted free agent. So this fall, I mean, <laughs> <Sounds> yeah, <good. laughs> or maybe this winter, depending on. Yeah, it, yeah. Mm. So I don't know. There's talk from Mavs fans. Would you take him? Some are like, absolutely not, because of the whole thing with Luca. What do you think? I think you. It depends on the money. Right. I would love to have just him. just assuming like it's a good contract. Yeah, I would take him in a heartbeat because now you're combining his... Because he is tough and he is a bully and he is physical. Um, I think he's also a little bit smarter than Paul George and Marcus Morris and kind of got caught up in that. Mm-hmm. But a pick and roll through stretches of a game with Luka and, and Harrell would be very effective. And Carlisle would put him in situations where he is successful. The guy averaged 20 points a game. He averaged 18 and a half points off the bench, off playing the bench. less than 28 minutes. So having that coming off your bench with Carlisle, Carlisle able to put him in positions where he's going to be successful, I absolutely would take him in a heartbeat. Do you think he would – so he would come off the bench here or would you yeah. want him starting? Okay. No, I, I think I think he just is too deficient on some aspects. Like offensively, okay. he's great in pick and roll. Pick and roll offense, he's awesome. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's not really a good rebounder. He's not – he's a terrible defender. He averaged um, 7.1 rebounds. Yeah, but he's a little undersized. Yeah. So, and 7.1 rebounds in today's league. Yeah, he's 6'7". Yeah, he's, <laughs> so he's really has a lot of deficiency, so you yeah. don't want that as your starter. But for 25 minutes, 30 minutes coming off the bench, and while he's on there, your offensive rating is 121 point whatever. It's the same with Dwight Powell. If, if Carlisle can make Dwight Powell relevant in today's league, or... Brandon Wright or Brandon Bass, all these guys that when they leave, yeah. he can make Montrez Harrell relevant or really, really good. Okay, so next one, um, the Celtics. I think a lot of people expected them to go a little further. And Gordon, there's talk that Gordon Hayward might be available. He's a free agent in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got, I don't know what this is, if it's a player option or a team option. Would you want to trade for, for him or say when he's a free agent, sign him? I don't know. I mean... He'll be 31 years old. Yeah. He had the the leg thing. He's had problems off and on. I I would say that if the Mavericks ended up with Gordon Hayward, that was like their plan E. Okay. You know, like, granted, if you had him, you're a better team. If he's your small forward, you're a better team. Because, one, he is actually really good. Yeah. Um, he's a, a quality defender. He doesn't get the reputation for being a quality defender, but he's not bad. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I would take him, but that would be 
kind of that's they not, failed on everything okay. else, but they didn't want to go into next year with the same roster. That's not like a plan A or C or, or B or C. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Thunder now they let go or Billy Donovan. I guess it was mutual, and so there's talk that they're going to blow that up. Um, the player, obviously, possibly any player will be available, but a lot of people talk about Chris Paul. Would you take Chris Paul? No. Nah. I mean, he's just the age. He's and too old. He's 34, will be 35. Yeah, and... Or maybe he's already 35. Look, he, he did a great job with the Thunder, but he was on his best behavior. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to be there next year. And there's just too many times in the past where there's players that just don't like him because he's very political. He... Uh, sometimes kind of get your coaches fired he's just had a lot of those kind of issues and i don't want that involved with this team so um you mean like he tends to offense to play uh, both sides of trying trying to get his way and like the office politics exactly thing. Yeah, yeah yeah and there's been a lot of of rumors about that in the past about that um so um no i just and then the age and then um I just don't think he's a fit. I, I, I think the Mavs need a shooting guard next to Luke and not a point guard. Okay, so let's get to a bigger one that we can actually talk about. Because I think I agree with you. Like, I think Montrez Harrell makes sense. And I get the whole thing with, with him and Luca. And I don't know, the fact that he, on his own, apologized. I feel like there's no real beef there and that they do actually respect each other. Mm -hmm. Um, it's different when other guys, like Marcus Morris, I don't think he actually respects. It, it sucks because he would have been a perfect fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I, I agree that Montrez Harrell, I think, would be a good fit. Chris Paul, well, yeah, I mean, you know, you'd love to have a guy with that that history of being a great player on your team. But like you said, the age, the fit, and... Chris Paul was like a different player this year than he ever has been. Everyone this year is like, hey, you know what? He's actually kind of a nice guy. But it's like, <laughs> well, this is the first year yeah. that people have felt that way. So I kind of agree with you on that one. Okay, so the one that just came up today, Victor Oladipo, there's talk mm -hmm. that he wants out of Indiana. I mean, to me, that kind of seems like a no-brainer. But, I mean, you do have the injury history. Is that a problem? That's the problem with, yeah. with him, with me. Now, the, the question is... I mean, if you get Victor Oladipo, you're probably giving Tim Hardaway away yeah, for that. I would say that yeah. would be part of the deal. Yeah. Um, is Victor Oladipo a better player than Tim Hardaway? I've... I would say in some aspects, yes. But Tim Hardaway, with that catch and shoot three ability with Luka Doncic, is very very effective. They they actually play on the offensive end of the side of the court. Mm -hmm. They're they're perfect for each other. They're a match yeah. made in heaven, but Oladipo brings some of the other things that the Mavericks yeah. were lacking. Playmaking, for example. Defense. Defense. And and he is a good shooter, too, so he can spot up and yeah. catch and shoot. He shot almost 32%. Actually, that's not very good. Well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That was the this year with all the injuries and all that. Yeah. Last year, he thought shot 34%. So he's an adequate three-point yeah. shooter. Um, but he's a better playmaker, and he's a better defense defensive Defender. player and uh so you're basically swapping out hard away for Oladipo does that make you a better team yeah I mean like okay so here's the problem with being a fan of a team and I think it was Kirk Henderson brought this out on Twitter like when you watch every game you tend to overrate your own players I think that happens all the time and so it's like with Hardaway there's a lot of things that I love about him that he does really well. And so you get caught up in like, okay, no, he did this so well. They fit because of this. You're like, you can't get rid of him. It's like, well, no, you weren't good enough this year to accomplish the ultimate goal. So but was somebody's got to go. But was he, the, was he part of that problem? And that's the hard part. I think part. the person that we're having that need to have that conversation <laughs> about is Dorian. Yeah. We all love Dorian. He's a fan favorite. He's great. But is he that guy? If Dorian was on the 2016 Golden State Warriors or Cleveland Cavaliers is he even playing well okay so here's you know playing the devil's advocate you know every championship team it's not like every single guy is an all-star averaging 15 points a game on the starting lineup Correct. I mean even going back to the Mavs you had Deshaun Stevenson starting but is that Dorian is he if that we're just level? saying Deshaun Stevenson 
I think he could be. Okay. Now, now, I don't think his defense is there yet. But I'm just saying, hypothetically, he, he has progressed every year. If he continues to do that, then yes. He yes, fits. okay, but Deshaun, if the Mavs had an opportunity to upgrade over Deshaun Stevenson, do you think they would have? Well, no, but just because I know the Mavs. They, I mean, they don't do things like that. Like Okay, let's just say hypothetically, okay, hypothetically they offered you... They offered you, at that point... Tracy McGrady Tracy for McGrady. Deshaun Stevenson. You're telling me well, they wouldn't do that trade? <laughs> yes, they would, okay, but so, I mean, that's... Let's say it's it's okay. prime Bruce Bowen. Okay, but the the problem is that that trade doesn't happen. Tracy okay. McGrady for it. You always All have I'm, to give up something in order to get that thing 100% back. 100% agreed. All I'm okay. saying is, was that Tim Hardaway? Is Tim Hardaway the piece you have to upgrade? Okay, okay. So is it really an upgrade when you're going Victor Oladipo? Now, if you're going Oladipo a couple of years ago when he's healthy and he's the star in Indiana, yeah. 100% hands down, you make that decision. You make that call. You get him. But is that going to be the guy that you get? And if it's not... Is he an upgrade over Tim Hardaway? Now, defensively, you would say Maybe, yes, but, even but that's who affected knows? by yeah. injuries. And then who knows if you actually dig deep into it? You know, do the advanced analytics, is he actually a good defender yeah. or is he a Patrick Beverly and just has this reputation I don't for think being he's a good defender? That, All I'm but, saying is, yeah. Is, is, yeah. is Tim Hardaway the piece you have to upgrade? Is he what was holding you back? See, to me, I see it as a puzzle and the the pieces have to fit just right and sometimes that means that you do have a guy like Dorian starting on a championship team but he just the the puzzle pieces fit so well that it works you know and that could mean that you have literally everything else and you just need a guy that can hit some three pointers and play defense and that works but it might mean that no that you need to use that spot that Dorian fills to do something more yeah, you you need that guy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and I think that's the point. Yeah, it's like need you that need guy. that guy. So, so either you upgrade the, the is it third either potential star or um, Dorian. Yeah, so or, then I mean, something else. So then you're you're upgrading your third best player essentially. Yeah, and you're you know because Dorian's going to be Dorian no matter what the level of talent is around him. Mm -hmm. He's going to be that guy. Right. He's going to be starting in the final. He's finals. a contributor. He's, He's a role it. player. Yeah. So can you upgrade the other guys that make a different impact, like scoring and playmaking? Because you have the role player, the defender, yeah. you know, the hustle guy. You have a top-notch talent in that particular field. So, yeah, I, I don't know. With Oladipo, if you could find a way to not give up Tim Hardaway, then I if, would be yeah. happy with that. But I just don't know how. See, like, okay, so I... Guess it I, depends his contract. Yeah, I think that Dorian is... I think he's the perfect guy for a starting lineup, even on a championship team, mm -hmm. because he I fills see. that role really well. And the bigger point is that he's cheap. I see what you're saying with yeah. the Dorian. I, so I, yeah. I kind of agree with that. Well, so I'm not then, saying that, like, to, you know, continue argument or whatever. I'm right. I'm, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I, like, to continue the yeah. conversation, I think that they're going to end up keeping him because he's cheap just like and he fills the role. Yeah. yeah. It's not like it'd be different if you're paying Dorian Hardaway money, but you're not. Yeah. So then, yeah, I mean, the question is, is uh, can you trust that? Because now you're asking two guys that are part of your building blocks of the future in Oladipo and Porzingis. They have serious health questions. Yeah, that's and true. And do you have that much trust in your medical staff compared to any other staff that that person's not going to get injured. You can't control everything. Like a guy landing on your knee, going in for a rebound, doesn't matter what you prepare for. Yeah, that's just going to happen from time to time. Now I know an MCL isn't really that serious. Yeah, I think and he's he, already fine. Yeah, like, he's he could have played on pictures on, it. on Instagram of him working out. Yeah, with his so I, he probably even could have played and would have. Yeah. But there's no point in risking. I completely understand yeah. that. Um, but the point is, it happened. I, I would say that. Uh, you go after Oladipo because it's a it's yeah. a low high risk low low risk high reward. Yeah, yeah, he's a free agent next summer, mm -hmm. so you so give it still him for, opens up your cap yeah, space. Yeah, you get you get him for one year for twenty one million, and then he's an unrestricted free agent. And I just think like I love Hardaway, and he did fit, and he was better than I thought that he would be. But also, he's twenty seven years old. This year he averaged less than 16 points a game i i really liked him but i think but if you, you're if you're if you're thinking 
logically building a team, we have to give up something in order to get better. I think Hardaway is the obvious piece because... I don't know. I mean, I think in today's league with the three-point shooting and having to... And the fact is he can rise up at any moment in the game because he jumps really high in his three-point yeah. shooter or jump three-point shot. He has a high release, high arc. He can get his shot off at any time. So then who do they use to upgrade? Well, I, or, or what spot? Say maybe not a trade or whatever. The, but. The, the third wing. For me, I like... Luca and Hardaway and Dorian and Porzingis. I think that third wing spot would be what you would want to try to upgrade. Okay, so do you have Porzingis playing the four or the five? five? Okay, see, I don't think... I think that he should play the four, and I think that when Powell is healthy or whoever fills that spot, they'll go back to early in the season when Powell was, was the role guy and Porzingis was the pop guy. And let me tell you why. Okay. I hated it, and we talked about it on the pod, how we were like, why is Porzingis the guy popping? Like, he should be rolling. That's his strength. But whenever I was talking to this doctor about whether or not the Mavs should be concerned about uh, KP's injury history, he and another physical therapist said the same thing, that really it's just about the situations that he's in. Like, he probably shouldn't be in situations where he's rolling hard to the basket or exploding for alley-oops or posting up. And I thought oh, that must be why they had him popping out, like on the three-point line, you know, the pick-and-pop guy. I think that's the ideal role for him, given his injury history. And so I think he should play the four with either Powell or someone else being the role man. I think then you would have to... The the center position has to be a really unique center because he can't defend the fours on... Who can't defend? Porzingis. Because a lot of the fours nowadays are wings. Yeah, I mean, you're you know, right about that. So, yeah, he might be guarding Kevin Durant. And that's obviously yeah, exactly. Well, then Dorian would guard Kevin Durant. But it creates a mismatch, a, a mismatch yeah. for the offense, right. and so it, it hurts him. So, but if you can get a center that who is a center on offense, but a wing on defense, hmm. the name. I'm I'm not saying they're going to get him or they're going to be interested in him or, or anything like that, but just that style of the body type and everything would be a Ben Simmons. Because oh. he's 6'10", he is a wing defender huh. on the defensive end. But on the offensive end, if he was a pick and pop, pick and uh, roll, because he's got hops or anything. Again, yeah. I'm not saying that's who no, they should yeah. go after, but just that body style, that that t- play type, um, to me, would. The, it, and I don't yeah. know if Dwight Powell can guard wings. I don't know if well Dwight Powell. I mean, Maxi would be yeah. the closest thing to that. So Maxi, essentially, you would be what you did. This year in the playoffs, you would be starting Maxi and Porzingis. Yeah. So with the with upgrade then roster. would be Maxi's position. Yeah, or the five. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the five would have to be a Maxi type player. Okay. So given that information, <laughs> it said today that Miles Turner might want out of Indiana. He's a center. He's twenty four. He's tall. <laughs> he's seven foot. <laughs> yeah, I was great. Looking for, ana- I was analysis. looking for his height he's on this page. Tall. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. a basketball player. So yeah, he's tall. So let's say he wants out of Indiana. Now he's got one, two, three years three left years, on his contract. Million. So then the the trade would be for Oladipo and Turner. Well, maybe not. I mean, that's not what I was thinking. Now I guess maybe you're saying that's what it would have to be. Well, I think. I don't know because Indiana, they can't. Nobody's going to take Turner. That Wait. contract, no one's going to oh, take that. Okay. And so, because it's eighteen million for a guy that he you averaged know, twelve point six and a half rebounds as a starter, played twenty nine minutes a game. Yeah, and that's eighteen million right there. So he can shoot in a, I mean, he in shot a thirty four percent on threes. He is a better three point shooter than he's probably given credit for for yeah. a big. I mean, he's a career almost 36% So then shooter. let's say hypothetically, is this what you want next year for your starting lineup? Luca, Oladipo, Dorian, Porzingis, and Turner. I mean, okay, I don't think that is in the realm of possibility, but yeah, Let's just say sure. theoretically yeah, that's what they're... I think that would be an upgrade in a lot of ways. I think offensively. I- I'm worried about the injuries with Oladipo, but we'll just, you know, yeah. we'll go into dreamland here. 
let's just imagine Oladipo and and Porzingis are relatively healthy for the rest of their careers. Yeah. And this could be a classic case of Oladipo where he's always injured with one team. The player goes to another team, never injured again. Happens all the time. Happened Mm -hmm. with Vince Carter, couldn't get on the court in Toronto. He's traded or goes to New Jersey. It's never, never injured, injured again. again yeah. Literally, you play 21 season in the league <laughs> um, or 22 or something like yeah. that. So that could be a case of that. But let's just say relatively they're healthy. You don't see any issues with that starting lineup. For me, I think offensively it would be great. I think defensively the Mavericks would really struggle. Really? Who, who plays the five? Well, Miles Turner. He On is- the defensive end? So you have Porzingis mm. guarding Kevin Durant and – Anthony Davis? I mean, okay, so I would have to dig into Miles Turner a little bit more. I know Who? him. I know of him because mm-hmm. of watching the NBA. But I couldn't say right now, like, yes, that would definitely increase their win percentage by this much. And I would say the length that they would have on the court would be pretty sick. And if they were to do, like, a zone-style defense, yeah. that might help because they would be so long and athletic that that might work i just see and maybe in some teams it wouldn't be a problem maybe when you're going against a four guard lineup you just start porzingis at the five and turner comes off the bench for those games so okay um explain to me again why the trade would have to be for turner and oladipo well i think you kind of have to spice it up both ways because you have injuries with oladipo but he's on a one-year deal and that's really... It, but, I mean, I just mean, like, why couldn't the Mavs just get Miles Turner? I don't know. Um, I'm okay. sure... I guess they could. I don't know if I, I just, just assumed, missed that No, part. no, no. Okay. I, I, I just assumed if they're both available, you might as well try uh, to get them both. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think maybe, like... I, I can't imagine any team trading for Miles Turner and just not, for Miles and Turner. Not trying to yeah, get so, Oladipo, yeah. and, and taking that contract, I would think in order for you to spice up the Miles Turner trade, here's an expiring contract of mm-hmm. Oladipo who wants out, but he also may be good. See, that to me sounds more like if the if the Pacers wanted to just... Blow it up. Yeah, kill everything Whoa. and start over. And, I mean, maybe they do. I haven't heard that. I mean, that doesn't mean it's not true, but... Well, I, like I would imagine they'd want to get back another star or something. Then it, you know, it then it doesn't be the work. Mavs. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah, be the Mavs. Be the well, Mavs, in that no. case, maybe they could just get Miles Turner. So let's say hypothetically, you had Luca, Hardaway, Dorian, Kristaps, and Miles Turner. How do you feel about that? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I think offensively. It would be great. I just would have concerns about the defensive end of the court. Yeah. And um, honestly, I don't know if that's a lot of an upgrade. Can Turner guard the pick and roll? Yeah. You know, so I, I actually, I think he can based on the games that I've seen him play against the Mavs. He mm-hmm. does a really good job on Luka. Um, but then if they put Porzingis in the pick and roll, you know, does that work? So I guess, I don't know. I I don't know. For $18 million for an experiment, it seems kind of risky. I don't think the Mavericks would do that because it basically eliminates 2021 and they're not yeah. going to do that for a player like Miles Turner. That's the other thing about the Mavs is that you know they're waiting for 2021. I think so. they'll make, in my opinion, I, I think if they get the right deal, the right players, they'll go for it this offseason. Maybe. Um, Since Luka was so good, how can you why not? Why would you? You don't need Yeah, why would you waste another year? star. You have a guy that is equivalent to two stars. You have two stars. Yeah, with LeBron, you don't need two other stars. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he had he's him. done that, but yeah. So it's, yeah, I feel like, I'm and not, he's, like he's, don't do anything stupid, but you know. And the thing is, he's a different player than LeBron. So LeBron didn't always deliver at the end of the game when you needed a bucket. Because he did wasn't consistently shooting whatever. It's funny because of what he just he did. did he the, did it against the Denver the nuggets. nuggets. Yeah. But you know, he historically he hasn't done that very often. Okay. And Luca is going to be the guy that shoots that shot. True. He's not going to be passing it. It's not going to be Kyrie. Um. Okay. Last of the the free agent trade or whatever. Serge Ibaka. He's an unrestricted free agent. With the Raptors, they're, I think they gave it a run to be like, we're still the same without Kawhi, but it's like, no, you're not. Do you think I think he stays in Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Would you I, be I interested don't see, in him? Nah. I mean, if obviously, if you got him really cheap, 
than I would. I think that would be a the next option from a Ben Simmons type style quality, you know, build mm-hmm. of a player because he can guard a wing. I think he can do a better job guarding a wing than it's not ideal, but than uh, Porzingis. So okay. Um, last question: When will Luca win MVP? Next year. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I mean, it depends on their record. If they can get some pieces and they can stay healthy and they are a top three seed in the West and he's averaging 39 and nine, how do you not give it to him? After what you've seen in the playoffs, he's already had a better playoff career than James Harden. (laughs) Ouch. (laughs) Statistically. Burn. Um, Yeah, I'm actually working on an article right now. I don't think it'll be published on DallasHoopsCast.com. It might be somewhere else, but um, of LeBron James records that Luka can break. All and, of them. Well, honestly, when you look at LeBron's records, this dude, like, the records he has are insane. Mm-hmm. So I picked out seven that I think he could break. But honestly, like, the ones I picked out, it just shows how great Luka can be because I was like, yeah, I think he can do that. Mm-hmm. When in reality, it's something totally crazy. But The, the thing with LeBron that Luka may or may not have is just LeBron's health and his ability to still move yeah. like he did when he was 25 years old and Luca he might be able to do that he might not I think you're gonna you 15 good years of Luca would be probably more realistic because mm-hmm. that's what a typical player would do yeah and then they declined LeBron hasn't really declined yet but see this is one reason why I think guys like Wilt and Bill Russell and you know all those guys and Oscar Robertson would still be great in today's NBA because like if you play it out completely and not just as a crazy question or whatever, if you play it out and they have access to all of the medical advancements and treatments that Shoes. LeBron has, well, yeah, yeah, but just the treatments and all that, that LeBron does, you know, guys like that, like Jerry West and those guys, they would do all of the things yeah. that LeBron is because doing. Because it's it's not just the technology, it's the, the mental mindset, aptitude yeah. to do the, the to work that exactly. hard. Exactly. So if you pair their their greatness mentally and what they were committed to doing with today's advancements, I like, yeah, they would totally be just as also great. Also makes you wonder if Jordan on steroids. took <laughs> his off seasons as seriously <laughs> instead of and smoking a cigar yeah. and drinking a beer after a game, if he took it as seriously, how much better he could have been. Either way, it's a completely yeah. different subject. Okay, let's play a game. This game is called Walk of Fame. Okay. So I'm going to name an NBA star a great, <clears throat> and you have to guess if this star played for the Dallas Mavericks. This will be easy. Yeah, you know, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. All right. Well, when I had the idea, I was like, ooh, I'm going to stump Marty. And then but if they're a him. star, I should be able to. You want to be a star, don't you? <laughs> I should be able to get it pretty easily. Well, you know, I like pointing out when you're wrong okay and so i thought hopefully this would, i'll be wrong so you can i point thought out. this would be fun but then when i got a list together i was like ah he's gonna know all of these if it's completely boring we'll just edit it out yes okay so i don't know how many because i didn't number them i just bulleted them but whatever um uh, <clears throat> first one this is a tough one andrew bogut <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> you see it's not as hard as all i right. thought it would be i don't know if he's a star well, he was. And yeah. with yeah. Milwaukee, yeah. he was a star. He was, yeah. yeah. Shut your face. Uh, Latrell Spe- Sprewell. No. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. But you know what? He did play for the Warriors. Very relevant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Zach Randolph. He did. Yes. Yeah, for one season, I think. Not even. Oh, he, okay. They acquired him in a trade. And then I, he didn't even come over. Yeah, that was when they traded for, um, the, they traded Harrison Barnes to the Kings, Oh, that's right. That's yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Rick Barry. No. Right, no. But <laughs> <laughs> he did play for Houston for two years. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, interesting. Next, Elton Brand. Yes. Okay. This is easier than I thought. Yeah, it would keep be. going. I'm, I'm feeling all right, good all right, about all right, this. All right, all right, all right, all right. Scott Brooks. No. He did. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, he did I, I wanted to Mavericks. say yes for some reason, but I, yeah. 
I backed away from it. Okay, but he's not really a star. You know? <laughs> he said well, this was a star. He's a star like. because, you know, he's a head coach, and you know what his he's name famous. is. He's famous. Yeah. Okay. He's well known. Right. Um, that's two links to the Mavericks, because I think he and Carlisle go back they were best in buds some way. And, yeah. yeah. Okay, next. Sam Cassell. Yes. Yes. Okay. He did. A long, long time ago. Yes. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> okay, Next. I don't know why I say next after each one. I should just say the name, and then that'll be enough. You should just edit that out. Okay. Robert Parrish. I'm going to say no. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, I'm sure that it, the answer is no. <laughs> You're right. But he played for the Hornets and Bulls. I didn't know that, and that's surprising. I mean, I guess you just you know the stars as the team they played for you don't realize that most of them when they get older they move they, on even barkley yeah barkley yeah. yeah i mean pippen like they, they mm-hmm. all play for these random teams but jordan. nobody knows them for that yeah jordan <laughs> um okay alex english i don't think he ever played for the mavs he did oh okay yeah Next. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't have any rhythm to it whatsoever. <laughs> Chauncey Billups. Uh, no. Correct. You're doing excellent. Okay, just move on. This is getting weird. Gerald Green. Yes, he did. Yes, yeah. he did. You are correct. Okay, I know. That's why. <laughs> this next one, I wrote, I typed Tom Hardaway. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tim Tim Hardaway, Hardaway Sr. Yes. yes, he did play for the Mavs. Okay, George Gervin. No. Correct, but he played for the Bulls. Again, I don't understand what any of this well, has to do It's just weird. With... I mean, can you imagine George Gervin in a Bulls jersey? Well, no, but, <laughs> It's just you know. weird. Okay, uh, Christian Leitner. Leitner? Leitner. 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 I think he did play for the Mavs. He did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Christian Leitner. Okay, Tim Legler. Yes, he did. He yeah. did, yeah. In the 90s. Um, Tyron Liu. He did as well. Yes. How did you know that? <laughs> I just remember, I think they were looking for a backup point guard to Steve Nash for a while. Wow. I think that's the time period. That is impressive. Okay. Let's that's not cry impressive, about it. Okay, Martin. Just okay. Move on. Uh, Dominic Wilkins. No. Correct. But, but he played for some <laughs> random team that has nothing to do with Mavs. Okay. He played for the Celtics. Wow. Spurs. Oh, my God. Magic and Clippers. None of those are Dallas. I know, but can you imagine Dominic Wilkins in a magic... Well, I mean, I mean, can you imagine, like, right? Next. Okay. Uh, Dennis Rodman. He did. Yeah, he did. Early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I think that was an excellent game. Thrilling, uh, I'll <laughs> tell you that much. Well, it was... It, was, uh, a, it was, had me on the edge of my seat <laughs> the entire time. It was a good test of your knowledge. Yep. So the next game, we're not going to do it this episode, but in a future episode, I want to do... You know what? I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Because I don't want to give it away. Oh, no. You want to leave the cliffhanger. Yeah, cliffhanger. If so you want to know what the game is, you, you have to listen, listen to our next pod. Yep. Okay. And then I was thinking of doing one in reverse where I name a random no-name guy and you have to guess if he played for the Mavs. So you are going to explain the game. Well, no, this is another another one besides the other oh, one that okay. I did. Oh, okay. Just want don't mention explain. it in the next yeah. podcast. Okay. Anyways, um that's all I have for this episode. Is there anything else you want to share or say? No. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Sydney. Martin is Martin. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. 